Hello, I'm Dr. Sam and this is Dr. Sam's Health. Today I'm going to talk about alcohol and thus I would like to finish my macronutrients review series. We already spoke about lipids, about carbohydrates, about proteins and I promise to talk about alcohols as a very special, unique category of macronutrients. I know it's a little bit of a controversial topic, mostly because the associations people have with alcohol. Some people, when they hear the word alcohol, they associated with a nice cold beer on a hot summer day or uh, they think about some cocktail party, they think about some fun time. At the same time, when people hear the word alcohol, they might think about problem drinking, alcoholism, alcohol use disorder as we call it in psychiatry. But very rarely people consider alcohol to be a macronutrient, to be a nutrient in general. And that is something I would like to talk about today. I would like to focus on that rather than, than on alcohol's abuse potential or uh, its uh, fun properties. So what is alcohol? Let us define it first. And believe it or not, alcohols are way larger category of um, chemicals than one might think. First of all, the word alcohol stems from uh, Arabic alcohol, which stood for uh, eyeliner. Apparently, ages ago, they used alcohol to produce eyeliners in, in the Middle East. Since then, there have been quite a few advancements of chemistry and uh, chemical nomenclature. And now, the word alcohol stands for any substance, any molecule that has an OH hydroxyl group in, a, in the primary position. And uh, believe it or not, there are quite a few alcohols, uh, just to name a few, methanol, ethanol, mannitol, xylitol, uh, maltitol, uh, and many, many, many others. Uh, believe it or not, cholesterol is technically an alcohol. But in medicine and in nutrition science, we usually focus on just a few alcohols that are very, very important. So these would be alcohols that are actually used in everyday life, something like ethanol, methanol, uh, propyl alcohol, uh, xylitol, sorbitol, mannitol, uh, and some others. I would like to specifically focus on two categories. One of them is like the alcohols that we can consume as a beverage and others uh, would be the second category would be sugar alcohols. I would like to start with ethanol which is our drinking alcohol and I would like to start with it primarily because it is literally a, a macronutrient if you are consuming alcohol regularly. So let's talk about it in general. So this is a substance that has been produced by fermentation from, from sugars, usually glucose. Uh, usually it's been produced by different microorganisms, some sort of yeast, but some micro, other microorganisms can produce it too. When we're making alcoholic beverages, we use specific microorganisms to produce uh, these various drinks on an industrial basis. But I would also like to mention that uh, natural fermentation of sugars happens all over the place. It happens everywhere in nature. And believe it or not, there are certain microorganisms in your gut that can ferment uh, sugars, carbohydrates in general, into alcohol. And in some people, these microorganisms are so active that they can lead to something that we call auto brewery syndrome, which means, simply means that they are so active that they produce so much alcohol that the person is effectively inebriated most of the time. Or at least if the police stops them while driving and check their alcohol level, uh, they will still have a certain amount of al alcohol in their bloodstream that will be considered to be substantial. This is obviously a very rare phenomenon, but I would like to draw your attention to the fact that alcohol is a natural occurring substance. It's pretty much everywhere, and our bodies are evolutionarily designed in such a way that we can process these alcohols. Specifically in our liver, we can convert alcohol, ethanol into acetaldehyde, the substance that causes uh, hangover, uh, and then acetaldehyde to acetic acid, which is like chemically neutral, more or less. So a couple of words about ethanol and alcoholic beverages. First of all, ethanol on its own is super energy dense, meaning that every gram of pure ethanol contains seven calories, which is just a couple of calories short of one gram of fat. So it's a very, very energy dense uh, nutrient. So when we are consuming alcohol, we are getting a lot of calories. If you are drinking a couple of standard drinks a day, you are likely consuming 
around 100 to 200 calories a day just from your alcohol and you don't even notice it usually and uh, this range of 100 to 200 it really depends on the place where you live because uh, different countries define standard drinks differently uh, from uh, 8 grams of pure ethanol in UK to 13.6 grams of ethanol in Canada. Another important thing about alcohols, about drinking alcohol, is that many drinks contain some other substances. So the purest one would be obviously vodka and other spirits like whiskey, bourbon, uh, cognac, brandies, uh, gin. So you can use these ones knowing that you are consuming mostly alcohol. On the other hand, we've got quite a few beverages that contain a lot of added sugar. Some creams like Irish cream, Baileys, Kahlua, uh, and others. So when you're consuming them, you're getting lots of calories and lots of carbs, pure carbs, along with alcohol. I would definitely suggest avoiding them if you're on low-carb diet to begin with. A very special category would be beer. So, beer contains alcohol, it does contain some carbohydrates, but most importantly, it contains something that we call phytoestrogens, which are plant-based substances that give uh, beer a very specific, unique taste, but at the same time, they act as estrogen hormones in our bodies. So, if you are on a very low-carb diet, it's not a good thing to drink beer, but also, if you're an athlete and you not just want to lose weight but you also want to gain muscle, you want to increase your testosterone levels, drinking beer might lead to quite bad results because of this phytoestrogens. You are increasing your estrogens effectively by drinking beer. In addition to all the macronutrients that, are con that alcohol beverages contain, alcohol on its own has quite a few profound effects on our behavior and our metabolism. First of all, it naturally decreases number of inhibitions, it affects our attention, executive function. As a result, alcohol leads to disinhibition and to uh, diminishing control over your food intake. So if you're drinking something, people tend to uh, stop following their diets. It's way easier if you are intoxicated to have some pizza, some nachos, uh, some other things. It might increase your appetite when you are drinking, again for the same reason. But also, alcohol consumption does affect your kidneys, your liver, your metabolism of other macronutrients, uh, and your metabolism as a whole. So in summary, I would recommend limiting your alcohol consumption to some uh, relatively low risk uh, amounts, something along the lines of one or two standard drinks a day. Uh, I would recommend avoiding any alcoholic beverages with added sugars, added carbohydrates or other substances like beer, like sweet, sweet alcoholic beverages like martini for example or uh, some uh, Irish creams, ba uh, Baileys, Kahlua and so on. We actually have very good uh, guidelines for alcohol consumption in Canada which are called Canada's low risk drinking guidelines. I uh, encourage you to check them out. People should not consume more than two, sometimes three standard drinks per day and the weekly amounts are limited to uh, less than 15 standard drinks per week for men and less than 10 standard drinks for women. I think it's, these are very simple uh, guidelines to follow and they pretty much ensure that you are not harming your health uh, tremendously by alcohol consumption. To be absolutely frank, I would say that if you want to follow a good low carbohydrate diet, actually I would say any diet. I would recommend uh, not consuming any alcohol whatsoever. Okay, another category of alcohols I would like to talk to you about is sugar alcohols. So this is a pretty broad category of alcohols which are uh, pretty much sugars and at the same time they happen to be alcohols. Why are they so important? Uh, I'll name a few and most likely you will recognize some of these names. Sorbitol, Manitol, Xylitol. So do these names actually ring a bell? They should because these substances are used as natural sweeteners and uh, a lot of food manufacturers are adding them into their foods to uh, to do several things. First of all uh, you should know that these are technically not sugars but sugar alcohols so pretty much 
when you add them to your food, you can still say that there is no sugar added because you did not add sugar, you added sugar alcohol. They have a couple of unique properties. Usually they are sweeter, way sweeter than uh, table sugar. Uh, and at the same time, they carry less calories. So this is a unique set of properties and they are exploited heavily. So for example, we can add um, xylitol to sugar-free uh, chewing gum. It will still taste uh, nicely and it will taste, it will still be sweet, but at the same time, there is no sugar added, again, because it's a sugar alcohol. Erythritol is also known as a natural sweetener uh, stevia, and we can use it as a natural sweetener. And again, they say it's not a sugar, right? It's purely natural substance. Uh, it does not uh, carry any uh, bad health effects. And one of these key things that most food manufacturers claim, and uh, it is true actually, that this sugar alcohols do not raise your blood sugar levels. And this is 100% true because we uh, measure sugar levels by the levels of glucose. It's not the levels of all sugars or all sugar alcohols. No, we are not actually measuring sugar alcohols when we are measuring blood sugar levels. We are measuring glucose levels. So when you add something else, which is not glucose, like sorbitol, mannitol, anything, the glucose levels do not go up, and accordingly you can claim that they do not raise sugar levels. At the same time, I would like to warn you, because all these products, they are technically carbohydrates, they are still different from sugars, but they have been processed by our body uh, pretty much in the same fashion as it would process sugars, and they might not cause the same insulin response, they might not cause the same uh, hormonal response in general, but it is very, very similar. So my honest recommendation would be to study the labels, the nutritional labels very carefully, uh, preferably to cook your own f food whenever you can and go with like least processed foods. By the way, I don't have anything against processed food in general. I just know how manufacturers can often trick you into consuming something that you shouldn't. Uh, I would generally recommend limiting consumption of these sugar alcohols and artificial or natural sweeteners. Because even with small quantities of these uh, molecules added to your nutrition, they still cause some hormonal responses that might be detrimental to your diet or your body transformation. So these were two categories of alcohols I would like to talk about, and I hope that right now you've got a way better understanding of of the foods that you're consuming, uh, what are the alcohols, what are sugar alcohols, what are natural sweeteners, uh, how do all these substances interact with your body, what kind of responses they elicit, what kind of caloric load they carry with them, and uh, you will definitely know better how to plan your nutrition, how to plan your body transformation, how to stick to your plan. So that was it for today, and that was it for the macronutrients review series. I'm very happy to have finished it now because I've got a couple of other ideas to go over. Please subscribe to my channel. Please like the videos on YouTube if you like them. Uh, make comments, make suggestions, ask questions. I'll be very happy to answer them. I want to see your engagement, and I want to see that what I'm doing is actually helping you, my friends. And I'll see you in my next video, which will be about my personal body transformation. That will be four weeks uh, of doing so. So we'll see what kind of results I managed to achieve. See you soon.